Hi there, and welcome to the channel Machining with Joe, a channel where I share with you guys my journey as a beginner machinist and also any tips and tricks and machine modifications I pick up along the way. And following on from last week's video, there's a new chapter on the channel now because I bought myself my very first milling machine. <laughs> So I've never owned a milling machine before and this is the first one I've ever owned and used. So it's going to be a new journey on getting familiar with this and seeing exactly what this is capable of doing. So let's quickly talk a little bit about the machine before I want to give you a general run round on the features that it's got. And in today's video, I want to try getting the head trammed and also the vice aligned ready for next week's video when we can start making some chips and maybe do our first little project, make some tea nuts on the milling machine. So I've gone for a Warco Major GH40. The GH means it's a geared head. So there's a set of gears in there, which using a few selectors basically dictates the speed that the spindle spins at. Why I've gone for this type of milling machine is basically it was up for sale locally and with the price and the things included, it was too good a deal not to take up. So I'm just going to give you a general look around now, the machine itself, and then we'll try tramming the head up and setting the vice up. So ignoring the spindle setup, let's just look solely at the machine for now and see what features this machine has. So I think first of all, let's start by looking at the table. So end to end, this table is coming in at 730 millimetres by 210 millimetres and it's also got three T-slots. There's a few drill marks and milling marks on here. Not very deep, but that's from the previous owner. Bearing in mind this machine is about 15 years old, so it's seen some use in its lifetime but not to say it's still a good machine and got plenty of use left in it. I won't operate it just now, but the spindle can come down 120 mil, I think it is, or 130 mil. So it's a good reach spindle. And if you need to get any more travel, that's where the round collar mill adjustment comes in. That basically allows you to unlock the head from the turret and wind it up and down like you would a pillar drill. So this is the downside of this machine being a round column mill that if you need to adjust the up and down movement on the column you do lose your centre mark when you're mid work piece so from what I've looked up online it's always good to try doing all your work in just the movement you can from the spindle there are a few modifications for these round column mills which I might look into in the future but for now, I just need to get used to using the machine and see what it can actually do. Something I have actually done myself when getting the machine, I have fitted a little DRO on the front here just to see how far down my spindle's coming when I'm doing work. So the, basically the digital display is up here and this moves up and down and gives a readout. But I'll go through that at a later date. Other than that, guys, this is basically my milling machine and now I think we need to get into tramming the head, getting the vise mounted on there squarely, ready for next week so we can make some chips. So the basic idea of tramming a head is basically to get the head perfectly aligned above the table and not so the spindle's kicking out to the left or kicking out to the right, making sure it's going straight down to the bed. So to do that, I've got an ER32 collet holder in here, a few linkages going down to my dial test indicator. And basically what we want to see is when we sweep this across the table from this point to this point over here, the dial reads exactly the same. So at the minute, just eyeballing it, I can see that when the dial's over this side, it's a lot higher than when it's on that side. So to start off with, I've loosened my 24 mil nuts and I'm just gonna give the head a little tap just to try getting it into the ballpark ready for when we line it up.
Right then, now we've got that in the ballpark figure of the head being pretty central, I can now lower the spindle and set a little bit of preload on my dial test indicator there. So let's do that now. So I'm just going to wind this all the way down just so we've got a little bit of preload on there. Lovely. So with that preload set, I'm going to move my dial around now so that reads zero. We're on zero there. So I'm going to turn my DRO on and we're going to zero that position on the DRO. So we now know when the DRO is reading zero, this dial test indicator is also reading zero. So now all I'm going to have to do is lift my spindle back up, swing the DTI gauge around to this side and then wind it back down till my DRO reads zero and we'll see what the difference is compared to this side to this side. So, right, so we've now taken the preload off there. We're going to spin this round all the way around to there and let's just wind that in. All right, DRO's on zero there. And I'll tell you what, that's not bad actually. So each one of these divisions is 0.01 millimeters or one micron. And we're currently reading seven microns under. So that's really good actually, just from eyeballing it. So what we need to do now, in theory, this head is tilted, making this appear to be seven microns higher than this side of the table. So with our nuts still loosened, I'm gonna tap the head to add about three microns onto this side and in theory that will take off three on this side and hopefully that should make it fairly level. Right, after having a little play around with this, I think I've got it plus or minus five microns. So currently my DRO is set to zero and we're reading four microns under zero. And then when I spin it over here, set my DRO back to zero. Uh, we're reading bang on zero there, so that's a four micron difference, which for what I'm going to be doing, I can totally accept that. So the next thing I need to do now is get my ma vice mounted on here and get that dialed in so I know that's running parallel with the spindle when it's running backwards and forwards. So now we've got our head trammed, the next thing I need to do is get my vice squared up on the table. I'm actually using a method that I watched on YouTube from a channel called Hass Automations. Um, I imagine most of you guys have heard of them over there. But the method they use is they keep one T-nut done up quite tightly and they leave the other one fairly loose. And by leaving one tight, it creates a pivot point around this bolt. So what I've done, I've zeroed my gauge on this jaw face here and I'm gonna wind the table across and see what kind of run out that we get along this face. If by the end of it we've got a bit of run out, I can tap the vise either this side or this side to get that run out in. So let's wind it across and see how that goes. So we're starting here on zero. And we've gone up by 10. Right, we've gone up by 0.2 mil so far, so I know I'm fairly a fair bit out. So I'm going to give this a little tap now. Let's wind it back to my zero mark and re-zero that. Right, so with that there, stick that back on zero and we'll wind across. So this is a process that I'm just going to have to keep going a couple of times until we get this bang on. So I can already see this time it's much better. We're near the end now and that's gone up by, so that's gone up by 10 microns or 0.01 mil. So let's give that another little tap. Tap that down by seven microns. And we'll run this all the way back along till it gets to zero and we'll run it back down again.
Right, so we'll set that to zero and run it down. So there's barely any fluctuation in that now. What's that? Oh, it's rising up a little bit. So we're at the end there and that's 0.05 millimetres. So I might just give that one final little tap. All right, I'm going to do that up now and then run across and see how that goes. So I've got to admit, that was actually a really easy method. So just by leaving this one fairly tight, you can create yourself a pivot point and make this process really easy. So that's my first ever time doing that. And fingers crossed, that went really easy. All right, let's get it all the way to the other side. All right, I can already tell that's within a couple of microns there. So that's on zero there. And let's just wind it across. That's like 0 0.01 millimeter over. So nothing at all. So I'm really happy. That's the vice squared up and that's the, that's the head trammed. So I think I'm ready to start making some chips. Um, I'm not going to do that in this video guys because I want to get a bit familiar with the milling machine off camera. So I'm going to do a little bit of practicing this week and next week when we come back I think I'm going to try making some new tea nuts for this. A nice little project to start me off on the milling machine. So I hope you've enjoyed this video guys. It's a new chapter on the channel so smash that thumbs up button and please subscribe if you haven't already. But for now Go back and watch one of my previous videos and I'll see you in next week's video where we're going to be making some chips.